Well, I just moments ago finished live streaming the uh, Boris Johnson resignation speech, and <laughs> you know, it's on my channel. If you want to go watch it, you can see my comments afterwards uh, about that particular thing. But if you watched my channel for, well, at least the past year, I've been telling you, I've been telling you for the longest time, this upcoming leadership contest is going to be brutal. It is going to be not just mud slinging, we're talking artillery barrages of mud flung from candidate to other candidates and back again. It is going to be bare knuckle boxing, the likes of which we haven't seen for years. And it looks like that a lot of people um, in, in sort of the media, which we're going to go over here, are now just starting to turn on to this fact that this leadership contest it's going to be messy, it is going to be brutal, and I'll tell you what, I am going to enjoy every single minute of it. <laughs> because one of the things you can guarantee that's going to happen is a lot of cabinet members in Johnson's government are going to announce they're running for office. We've already heard Suva Brayman, the current, the current Secretary General, and sort of say the government's top legal advisor, the person in charge of that stuff, um, has already said that she's going to run. So, <laughs> already, and trust me, we'll be going over the candidates when they announce their, their running and what their chances are. But I'll tell you what, she doesn't stand too much of a chance. <laughs> she doesn't stand too much of a chance at all. Because... It, this is going to get really nasty. And those former cabinet members probably have so much dirt on each other and they are going to start dishing. They are going to dish. And oh boy, we are going to hear some stories. We are going to hear some spectacular stories in the coming months. You can guarantee that. But anyway, let's get on to people waking up of just about how brutal this contest is indeed going to be. So before we do go into that, please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and our official link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And as always, there is the YouTube thank you button as well. And of course, there's the YouTube subscription button, where if you subscribe to me that way, you get all sorts of little bells, whistles and badges and whatnot that you can use on YouTube. So, Thank you very much to all those people who do support me that way. And of course, on with this. This comes from The Guardian with the title of It's Going to Be Awful. Tory MPs are gearing up for a vicious, vicious succession battle. And I don't know even, I think vicious might even be too soft a word to use for this coming leadership battle. So. There is a saying among ministers that the safest place to be in a crisis is the dispatch box. Behind it, you are in control of the situation. You can respond to any development on your own terms. But for Boris Johnson, there was little to take comfort from when he faced the MPs in the Commons Chamber on Wednesday. When asked by the Conservative MP Tim Lockton uh, if, he would, if there was anything that would convince him to resign, he replied that it was the job of the Prime Minister who would want a, quote, colossal mandate to keep going even when times were tough. The problem for Johnson is that an increasingly small number of his MPs agree, and after losing two senior cabinet ministers in the form of his Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, and Health Secretary, Samit Javid, the government is in free fall. Aides in Downing Street are attempting to try and short the Prime Minister by moving quickly to replace these cabinet vacancies, but it hasn't stopped others following suit. The rest in government, there are now about 20 unfilled posts, and Tory MPs, meanwhile, are conspiring to find a way to force him out of office before the summer recess in two weeks' time. Given the failed bid to oust him last month, Johnson is technically safe from another confidence balance until June of next year. 
try to fix that, the members of the 1922 Executive Committee will meet to discuss a rule change, and it's possible that Johnson could end up facing another no-confidence vote as early as next week. And that could, by the way, be still on, on track if enough Conservatives are still outraged that he is still there and that he hasn't gone, next week we could see another vote of no confidence in an attempt to try and oust Johnson from this position once and for all. It doesn't matter about the fact that he said he is going, the fact that they want to get rid of him as quickly as possible will matter far more to them. So anyway, it continues. While aides in number 10 say that they are bullish about his prospects, the numbers don't look good. After winning a majority of 80 in the 2019 uh, general election, many of his team are decided that there was little to, need, uh, uh, little to need to know. Now that is coming back to haunt him. There's no way back for him, a former minister says. We always knew we were doing a deal with the devil, but we didn't expect him to be so incompetent. A recent uh, comments by Johnson about his tour abroad in which he suggested that he would not change and spoke of his hopes of a third term turning uh, and this served to turn MPs who were sitting on the fence against him. Even if he manages to avoid in the vote in the coming weeks he would then face the prospect of trying to govern when so many in his party are openly against him. Prior to the Pincher scandal which spread which sped up the moves against the Prime Minister. Aging number 10 were talking up the party conference in October as a chance for Johnson to reassert control. That now looks ambitious. Even those cabinet ministers who decided to stick with the Prime Minister are having doubts. Michael Gove has kept a notably low, low public profile. Of course, he, he got sacked very quickly yesterday. Having reportedly called uh, on Wednesday morning for the Prime Minister to go, Meanwhile, displays of loyalty may uh, have more to them than meets the eye. There's also an argument that a potential leadership hopeful, such as Liz Truss or Nadim Zavawi, could be advantageous for them to remain in cabinet and then win over Johnson's loyalist vote in any contest. Zavawi, now Chancellor, is increasingly talked up as a serious leadership candidate. But anyone thinking that the end of Johnson will spell a more harmonious period for the Conservative Party is likely mistaken. If he goes, the leadership contest that follows will be vicious, and the task of the victor uh, to trying to face to lead the Parliament is daunting. It's going to be awful, a former minister says. I think the best thing is to do is to stay completely out of it and see where things are. <laughs> wow, that's quite, a bit, quite an admission. It's going to be so bad, I just don't want to even get involved. <laughs> so, after all, Johnson still has loyal followers, and they don't take kindly to the idea of MP changing the rules to oust the Prime Minister, who won the largest majority since Margaret Thatcher, something he mentioned in his uh, resignation speech. One such figure warned that any rewriting of the rules of the 1922 committee would, would unleash the forces of the MPs uh, would come to regret. Expect Johnson's Praetorian Guard, made up of figures such as Jacob Rees-Mogg and Nadine Doris, to be working against any possible candidate deemed insufficiently loyal to the Prime Minister. Something to watch out for. And among the old guard, there is a particular venom for Rishi Sunak, whom they view as sufficiently loyal or supportive even before he quit as the Chancellor. They'd also still have Boris on the sidelines as a thorn in their side, and whether in the Commons or throughout the column, uh, adds a senior Tory. For now, Downing Street won't engage in these scenarios. The message from the Prime Minister and from his top team is that he will keep fighting and the MPs uh, will move on uh, past this bout of anger in time. Well, they certainly didn't. You can tell when this was written. Conservatives worry that he will do anything to stay in power, to just cling to an early election, even though this would face mass opposition from his party. What is clear is that with every hour passes, the Prime Minister's grip on power is becoming looser. And ultimately, that is what happened. Obviously, this was written yesterday, um, obviously before the events of today, and maybe even the events of, obviously, saying, you know, Michael Gove's keeping a low profile, but 
people are starting to wake up to the fact that this leadership contest is going to be brutal and it's going to be hilarious for, for me to watch and for all of us who um shall we say hold very very much dislike of the tory party we are going to be cheering on these jibes and prodding at these ministers to go do it again and do it again <laughs> because we want to see the carnage be unleashed and if you've got a quote from a minister who's basically saying this is going to be so bad we're going to stay out of it because we just do not want to get involved this is going to be bad this is going to be very bad. But one of the things that is certainly going to affect a lot of these potential runners is if they were in Johnson's cabinet, because a lot of them are going to be asked about, well, why did you stay for so long? Why now, when there was so much other stuff? Why didn't you resign, you know, when you had the had the opportunity? Because a lot of them did not resign. Sula of Braveman, if we've, if we've, um, as we've said earlier, she didn't resign, but she announced her um, intention to run yesterday when before Boris Johnson announced that he would resign so so yeah um let the chaos commence <laughs> it is on and when the first volley gets fired expect an absolute deluge because I'll tell you now you're gonna need a serious umbrella because there is going to be a lot of mud slung in this contest. A lot. So, as always, um, thank you very much for watching. And like I say, do do hit that subscribe button if you do want to, like me, who follow the carnage and chaos of this upcoming leadership election. Because, oh boy, is it going to be fun. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button on your way out. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a one station link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all those people who do support the channel that way. And of course, we'll see you all next time.